TB is, has emerged as the number one cause of death in HIV-infected patients worldwide. Um, and we have now recognized that we really have to treat TB and HIV simultaneously, um, particularly in patients who have advanced HIV disease, because even delaying HIV treatment by six to eight weeks in patients with advanced uh, uh, HIV can lead to progression of their AIDS and increase in mortality. So then we're stuck with the problem of how do we treat HIV, which requires a number of medications at the same time of TB, which also requires a different set of medicines that can have overlapping drug toxicities. Um, and one of the most important combinations that we look at in the treatment of HIV and TB is the use of efavirenz, which is sort of the first line recommended medication that we give for HIV infected patients with TB, and rifampin, which is a really cornerstone medication for tuberculosis therapy. And we know from small uh, studies in both healthy volunteers and some European TB patients that when you give efavirenz with rifampin together, the rifa uh, rifampin can lower efavirenz levels on the order of about 30%. Um, and on the basis of this, the FDA made a recommendation that we should increase uh, efavirenz levels to overcome uh, the decrease caused by rifampin in people who are treated for HIV and TB uh, at the same time, particularly if they weigh more than 50 kilograms. I think what we have not uh, uh, known as well is what the impact of this reduction in the efavirenz levels is because at the end of the day what's really critical is what the efficacy is or the potency of the efavirenz uh, in terms of treating the HIV uh, disease because that's really what the efavirenz is there for. So what we did is we looked in this large multi-center uh, uh, study that we performed as under the ACTG called the STRIDE study that was designed to um, evaluate the optimal timing of HIV therapy in TB patients and help to establish that we really do need to treat these patients earlier. And it gave us the opportunity to look at what the impact was of rifampin on efavirenz in patients who were treated for both HIV and TB at the same time. And what we found um, uh, was that patients who were given rifampin um, at the same time uh, as their efavirenz uh, uh, had a small decrement in their efavirenz levels uh, as the weight went up, so more than 50 kilograms or more than 60 kilograms, but in the vast majority of these patients, the efavirenz levels still remained well above what we consider the therapeutic level. So I think that was quite reassuring to us that we did not see this major drop-off of patients going into the danger zone with their efavirenz levels. But even more importantly, what we found is when we looked at patients who started on both efavirenz and rifampin and then had the rifampin stopped as they completed their TB therapy, that efavirenz levels were actually higher on rifampin than off rifampin. Uh, initially, this was a little bit surprising to us, but when you dig into to how efavirenz is metabolized, it turns out that it's actually metabolized quite differently depending on the racial and ethnic background um, of the patient taking the medication. And that there's an emerging and fairly large body of literature that suggests that black and Asian patients metabolize efavirenz very differently um, and can have much higher levels of efavirenz both in general and when rifampin is added to efavirenz. And so that's just what we found in our study where over 75% of the patients were black is that when rifampin was added uh, to their, uh, when, when efavirenz was added to their, their uh, TB treatment, efavirenz levels went up. And this happened regardless of their weight. I think again this provided some really reassuring evidence that we were not jeopardizing the HIV treatment uh, by giving it at the same time as the TB treatment. At the end of the day, what we really care about is whether or not people's uh, HIV viral loads were suppressed. Um, and what we found is that regardless of the weight, that overall we had an excellent viral load suppression in these patients and that it did not differ by weight. As a matter of fact, there was a trend towards people having higher vi uh, virologic suppression, so a better response to their uh, HIV therapy if they weighed more. Um, so that uh, a higher weight, be it greater than 50 kilograms or greater than 60 kilograms, did not uh, uh, jeopardize the, the, the HIV suppression, which is the end of the day is really the, the, the goal of HIV therapy. Um, so overall, I think these were very reassuring data that tell us that giving standard dose of favorins, uh, along with common TB therapy uh, was well tolerated and didn't jeopardize uh, the HIV treatment.